is a branch of continuous mechanics which deals with the relation of forces, motion and static conditions with the continuous material. First of all, we will go for standard definition. First is mass density. So, mass density is denoted by rho. It is a mass upon volume. SI unit is kg per meter cube. Second is weight density. Similar to mass density, we have weight density represented by lower case w is equals to weight divided by volume. Unit of weight is Newton divided by meter cube. Basically weight is defined as mass into g divided by volume. So what is mass upon volume is density itself. So specific weight is given by product of rho multiplied by g. Relative density. Relative means comparison of density. So for this you have to take one fluid as a standard fluid. So water fluid, water is taken as standard fluid. Short form is RD is a ratio of density of liquid to density of water. It is applicable only for solid and liquids, not applicable for gases. This has kg per meter cube and this is kg per meter cube. So this is dimensionless M0, L0, T0. Then we have specific gravity denoted by Sg is the specific weight of any liquid divided by specific weight of water again dimensionless. So specific gravity is specific weight of liquid is given as density of liquid multiplied by G divided by density of water multiplied by G. G and G get cancelled is same as density of liquid divided by density of water. So in fact Hg is numerically equals to relative density. So for water we have Rd is taken as 1, Hg is taken as 1, density is also taken as 1 gram per cc that equals to 1000 kg per meter cube. So specific weight will be multiplied by 9.81. So 9810 Newton per meter cube. So this minimum property you should remember. So in the introduction section we will introduce three property. One is called as viscosity, one is called as surface tension and one is called as bulk modulus. So we introduce the idea of the rate of shear strength that you are familiar in machine design. For this purpose we will consider here one flat plate is separated by another flat plate. The space between them is filled with a fluid having viscosity equals to mu. The vertical difference between these two plates is T. The lower plate is fixed and the upper plate is moving with a uniform velocity equals to V by the application of force F. So here we are basically going to introduce the Newton's law of viscosity. For this one you have to understand how exactly the moment will take place. The moment between the two layers will always take place in the form of thin laminars. So these are the thin laminars. So fluid will move in the form of lamina in a flat plate and in a circular pipe it will move in the form of thin circular pipes. So these are the laminas. So if the upper plate will move in this direction then the lower plate will try to oppose it. So if I slightly enlarge this figure for visualization it will be like this. But in fact the gap is very very small so we can't, can't show anything there. So suppose the top fluid is going in the rightward direction. So this plate is moving in the rightward direction. So what this plate will do? It, this plate will try to oppose it in the this direction. So this one is action. So this is reaction. So if this plate is moving with a velocity equal to V, naturally the it will overcome the resistance and this plate, the top plate will drag the bottom plate towards its own direction. But the velocity in that case will slightly reduce, will be minus of delta. Now this plate will try to pull the lower plate, but the lower plate will oppose it by this shear stress and therefore it will try to overcome this shear stress. So this plate will again try to move in the same direction with a velocity equal to V minus 2 times delta. Like this the, all the plates are start moving, but the plate which is at bottom remains stationary because this is a fixed plate. So if you try to plot a graph of velocity with a vertical distance y. So this is my y axis, I am only interested in y axis. So if I plot a graph of x versus y, I get a distribution like this. 
velocity v is a strong function of y that is this and in general i will draw this graph because i don't know how the velocity relation will take place whether it's a really delta v or it's a three times delta v i don't know that i have to observe so that is the point of investigation so this one is called as velocity profile your velocity profile can be any form normally they will provide you velocity profile even you have the velocity profile like this also this one is called as straight line profile linear profile in that case your velocity will go on decreasing at a linear rate but right now we don't know that that is why we assume in this fashion that is general form at any distance y from the bottom plate anywhere somewhere here we'll consider one layer which has a velocity equals to v then the top layer will move with a velocity equal to v plus delta v and bottom will try to move with a v minus delta v so initially we have a element here in between this is this way is this element and because it's dragging on the right hand side so this element will get sheared in this fashion because the top plate is moving in a right over direction that is this way so if i say this is a fluid particle at time t and this is a fluid particle at time t plus dt then is the distance traveled from this end to this end is this distance traveled is v plus delta v multiplied by time time dt this is time t plus dt this is t so is this is multiplied by dt whereas the distance traveled from this point to this point is it equals to this velocity is v so this distance is v into dt not dt it's actually delta t this should be delta t a yeah? small interval this is we are taking finite quantity delta t and this is v multiplied by delta t so in that case if you are familiar with the machine design is this value is called as phi and this phi is called as shear strength shear strength that is shear strength and whenever we have a rate it's a derivative with respect to time so actually we are interested to know what is the value of d theta by dt how do you want to find out so in this case this distance is v plus delta v multiplied by delta t and this is v plus delta v multiplied by delta t so is this distance traveled here this distance traveled is this distance traveled will be equals to delta v multiplied by delta t and is the distance between the two layers we will consider as dy distance that is delta y distance it's a very very small distance so can we say that this vertical distance equals to delta y and this is delta v into delta t can we say tan phi which is a very very small angle equals to phi so in general can we write delta uh, phi equals to tan is delta v divided by delta y now it is a turn to define the rate of shear strain so rate of shear strain is d theta by dt actually so if you want to find out d theta by dt you have to take the limit of delta t tends to zero of d theta that is d phi here this is d phi so that is d phi that is delta phi divided by delta t but what is delta phi delta phi is this value is the limit delta t tends to zero equals to delta v multiplied by delta t divided by delta y multiplied by delta t in that course delta t delta t will cancel out and you left with limit of delta v by delta y into as delta t tends to zero and can we write is same as dv by dy so we have a first definition is that this one is phi actually so this is d phi by dt what is d phi by dt is called as rate of shear strain is equals to same as dv by dt the left hand side is called as rate of shear strain where the right hand side is similar to x and y graph that is x and y graph so it is called as slope so this is called as velocity gradient gradient means slope is dv by dy now this should not be equals to x axis no this should be velocity axis so x and y are interchange if it is x and y it's a dv by dy slope so this is just a reciprocal of this one so it is called as velocity gradient dv has unit of what meter per and this has unit of what meter so is this as unit of per second 